This video is brought to you by Brilliant. We're always chasing better performing and more efficient solar panels to help power our renewable future. But no matter how efficient a panel is, there are location-based impacts to performance. Tilt angle or orientation can either boost or decrease performance, and it's hard to achieve optimum performance in all locations. Solutions like solar trackers can help overcome some of these issues with moving parts, but they're usually not worth it in most cases. Instead of creating more efficient solar cells or tracking the sun with machines, a research team at Stanford has boosted PV efficiency, even on cloudy days, by concentrating the light that reaches the solar cells without any moving parts. Is improving solar generation really that simple? Let's see if we can come to a decision on this. I've covered a lot of solar panel advancements over the past few years. In a previous video, I touched on solar panel efficiency breakthroughs from 2022. We ran through some of the more exciting updates, pros and cons of solar panels, and my current take on it. Now, the truth is that solar panels are efficient enough today to achieve many of the energy needs that you probably have for your home. However, there are still several aspects that affect the power generation, and a couple of these are orientation and tilt angle. Solar panels require optimal tilt angles and direction to capture the maximum amount of sunlight and ensure peak performance. And when it comes to orienting solar panels, geographic location plays a crucial role. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, the ideal setup is to face your solar panels south. The reverse is true if you live in the Southern Hemisphere. For a better understanding of this, think about a home in the Northern Hemisphere with a horizontal roof line. So it has a roof facing both north and south. The north side of the building is basically shaded the whole day since the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, moving in an arc towards the equator line. During the morning, the west is shaded and the east receives the sunlight. In the evening, the east is shaded and the west is exposed to the sun. That means the southern side of the house will be exposed to far more sunlight throughout the entire day. If you face solar panels in any other direction, you can expect to see significant power output losses. Homes that have panels facing east or west will produce around 15% less energy, while facing north will see losses of about 30%. On my house, I have panels facing east and west because I don't have a roof facing south, so my panels don't see maximum output over the course of the day. I knew that going in, which is why I added as many panels as I could to try to make up for that difference. Now, the other important factor is the tilt angle, which is basically the vertical angle of your solar panels. Ideally, the sun's rays should be perpendicular to the surface of your solar panel because it results in the highest level of solar production. Typically, an ideal tilt angle for your solar panels will be equal to or close to the latitude of your home. The further north you go, the more the panels should be tilted. In this position, the solar panels will face the sun's highest point in the sky in the summer and its lowest point in the winter. However, proper tilt angle varies with the season and it reduces the power output of a fixed solar panel. Again, if you're getting solar installed in your home, the installer will take this into account when factoring in the estimated solar production for your house over the course of a year. For most US property owners, the ideal angle for solar panel installations is somewhere between 30 degrees and 45 degrees. But in real life, PV installers face challenges in achieving the optimal angle. Residential systems generally have higher or lower tilt angles because they're matching the roof pitch. Other issues such as available roof area, the minimal separation between the rows of PV modules, space for maintenance, avoiding panels shadowing each other, and dust deposition can all impact generation. Researchers from the University of Oviedo put some numbers to the energy losses that we're talking about here. Tilt angle deviations of up to 10 degrees in relation to the optimum tilt angle have less than 1% impact in the incoming solar radiation. On the other hand, if the tilt angle deviations are in the order of 31 degrees to 33 degrees, the solar panel produces 10% less energy. For example, the best solar panel angle to satisfy both the winter and summer conditions in New York is 41 degrees. If the panel tilt angle is instead 30 degrees, the average annual solar radiation will be 4.46 kilowatt hours per square meter per day. However, if the angle is decreased to 5 degrees, the solar radiation drops to 4.02 kilowatt hours per square meter per day. It indicates that the estimated electricity production of a 5 kilowatt system will reduce from 6,075 kilowatt hours to 5,438 kilowatt hours. These numbers mean that a solar panel with a tilt angle of 30 degrees will save an annual electric bill of $1,215, while the panels at 5 degrees tilt will save $1,088. This is where solar tracking systems can boost PV generation throughout the year. A solar tracking system adjusts the solar tilt angle to be aligned with the sun as it moves across the sky. It uses sensors to capture the sun's movement and control the system to drive electric motors that will constantly adjust the orientation and tilt of the solar array. Now, there are two types of tracking systems, single axis tracking systems, which tilt on one axis, vertically or horizontally, as they track the sun throughout the day, and dual axis tracking systems that track both the horizontal and vertical movement of the sun. A solar panel system with a single axis tracker provides an energy increase of about 10 to 30%. 
For example, a fixed 1.2 megawatt PV system in Melbourne, Australia that produces 4,612 kilowatt hours per day would generate 5,783 kilowatt hours a day with a solar tracker installed. Trackers work one of two ways, either with a timer or by a sensor or a combination of those two. Timers can be programmed for a latitude and they'll automatically point the solar panels in the direction where the maximum sunlight should occur for that date and time at that latitude. Photoelectric sensors can be used to find the sweet spot for maximum solar efficiency. For a single axis tracker, a sensor is mounted above and another one below the axis. If one of these sensors sees more light, it activates a relay to the motor to move the panel until the light is balanced between the two sensors. Timers are relatively hassle-free, but are especially susceptible to clouds. Picture a pesky cloud that keeps getting in the way. The timer has no way to know this and continues to point right at the cloud. Photoelectric sensors, on the other hand, would see the imbalance and point away from the projected optimal position, finding the true optimal position at that moment, which may be a few degrees from direct sunlight. The disadvantage to using photoelectric sensors is developing an algorithm that keeps the system from chasing the sun and constantly moving position. Each movement uses power and reduces the overall efficiency. The downside of using mechanical solar tracking systems is that they're more expensive and tend to have higher installation and maintenance costs. More moving parts makes them more likely to break and shut the system down for hours or even days. Moreover, trackers are too heavy to be used on rooftops, so they're usually installed on ground-mounted systems, which limits their use cases. So let's say you installed 15 ground-mounted solar panels with a power rating of 300 watts each. The total cost of this system would be about $14,625. If you want to include a solar tracker in this system, that would cost an additional $500 per solar module, adding up to a total cost from $22,000 for a single access or about $29,000 for dual access. The annual energy savings with those systems is around $1,400 and $1,500, which is only slightly more than the $1,100 savings with a fixed PV system. On top of that, the operation and maintenance cost for a one access tracker is $14 per kilowatt per year. Compare that to a fixed utility scale PV system, which has a price of about $13 per kilowatt per year. So you can probably see why it's generally viewed as not worth it to use solar trackers given the high upfront costs when you can instead just add a few extra panels to make up for the production shortfall. Now, these downsides have motivated researchers to seek new technologies to increase solar production while keeping the costs low. And one technology that's being explored is concentrated photovoltaics, or CPV. For a quick overview of CPV systems, they convert light energy into electrical energy in the same way as a conventional PV system. The difference in the technologies is that CPV adds an optical system that concentrates sunlight onto a small, high-efficiency conversion solar cell to obtain higher electrical power. Now, these kinds of systems are a bit like telescopes oriented towards the position of the sun, feeding the cell with concentrated light. Currently, CPV technologies use lenses and mirrors to reflect and concentrate the sunlight. And I've already made a video on concentrated solar power using mirrors, so I'm just gonna focus on CPV that uses lenses. These systems use an optical element that collects the sunlight and focuses it onto a tiny high-efficiency solar cell called a multi-junction solar cell, which converts solar power into electricity. The multi-junction solar cells are commonly composed of solar cells connected in series. Essentially, each layer collects a different wavelength of light, so together they're able to achieve a higher efficiency, sometimes around 40%, compared to a standard single-junction solar cell, which is usually around 20%. As the sunlight is concentrated and focused on the cell, the energy production is increased considerably. CPV system designs have been developed into three categories. Low concentration, where the magnification ratio is less than 10 times. Medium concentration is usually between 10 times and 100 times and high concentration is somewhere between 100 times and 1,000 times. In a nutshell, if you concentrate 10 to 100 times more light onto a properly designed CPV cell, you theoretically can produce more than 10 to 100 times more electricity. One example of a CPV system is the low concentration PV module from Zytex Solar. It provides a concentration level of 2.25 times by adding mirrors to the sides and uses prismatic lenses to concentrate the sunlight, which boosts energy production by 1.8 to 2 times compared to a typical PV installation. One advantage of these types of solar panel systems is that they require less land area compared to conventional solar power to produce the same electricity output. However, this comes at a higher cost. Concentrated photovoltaic panels cost between $0.80 cents and $1.10 per watt, while traditional solar panels cost about $0.70 cents per watt. Another issue is maintenance, with the addition of tracking and cooling systems. The annual operating maintenance cost of a CPV power plant located in Puerto Rico, Spain, ranges from 20 to 30 euros per kilowatt, which is about the same in US dollars. Now, with this idea in mind, a group from Stanford University developed a non-tracking concentrator device, which has the benefit of improved power generation without any moving parts. Their new immersion-graded index optic system is called Agile, and was presented in the July issue of Microsystems and Nano Engineering. 
It's a device shaped like an upside down pyramid with the bottom point lopped off that captures sunlight regardless of the angle of incidence and concentrates it onto a small area. The way it redirects sunlight from virtually every angle is from the interior, which has reflective sidewalls that funnel the light down to create a brighter output spot on the bottom. Robust, transparent, and inexpensive materials were critical to the success of Agile's design. For the prototypes, the research team at Stanford layered together different glasses and polymers that bend light to different degrees, creating what's known as a graded index material. The authors point out that Agile can be fabricated using 3D printing and common materials. This can simplify the manufacturing because it's relatively easy to change the composition of the feedstock as the additive manufacturing progresses. You can slowly transition from material to material. This is sometimes called functionally graded or functional gradient manufacturing. Now they tested two different prototypes and both prototypes demonstrated a three times optical concentration and achieved a 90% efficiency in capturing light. So it's not hard to imagine how big an impact this could have on existing solar panels. If you modified the existing top encapsulation layer that protects a solar panel with a layer of Agile, you'd reduce the amount of solar cell area needed to produce energy. It would also help reduce the negative effects of tilt and orientation of the panel itself. The benefits of this system could potentially reduce manufacturing and installation costs while increasing solar production compared to traditional trackers and CPV systems. It's basically like getting the benefits of tracking systems without the moving parts and maintenance issues. Now, the obvious negative is that Agile is still at lab scale. However, according to the researchers, the solution presents reduced costs, design flexibility, and scalable fabrication techniques to make implementation easier with common materials and 3D printing manufacturing. There's evidence showing that optical devices made with 3D printing can maintain or exceed the surface quality of traditional techniques, which can make fabrication faster, scalable, and cheaper. As we move towards a sustainable future, improvements in solar energy generation are essential. It's not just about boosting performance no matter the cost, but finding new and clever ways to engineer around the problems that we're running into in a cost-effective and sustainable way. PV tracking systems already exist, but the added costs and challenges make them a more niche solution. Something like Agile, however, could turn out to be a pretty large-scale solution to boost solar production across the board. We just have to be patient because there's still a long road ahead to get this out of the lab. And if you'd like to learn more about the science behind CPV and Agile, I'd strongly recommend checking out the Geometry Fundamentals course at Brilliant. They have fantastic interactive courses that can help you wrap your head around some of what we talked about with this solar panel technology, like calculating the angles and area of different shapes. Combine that with a scientific thinking course and you can apply how light bends and reflects. Now, I've been working my way through Geometry Fundamentals and I'm really enjoying learning at my own pace. If you get stuck, Brilliant will give you in-depth explanations which helps you to understand the why and how of something. They show you how to solve new and unfamiliar problems by using critical reasoning skills instead of just solving the same problem with different values. I found this active learning is how I learn best. Join over 11 million people learning on Brilliant today and go to brilliant.org undecided to sign up for free. And also the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium membership. Thanks to Brilliant and to all of you for supporting the channel. So you still undecided? Do you think Agile will catch on and make a difference with solar? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. If you like this video, be sure to check out one of the ones I have over here. And thanks to all my patrons for your continued support and a welcome to new Supporter Plus member, Donald Papavero. And thanks to all of you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.